Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at the poles and zeros of a rational Z transform. So, we are going to look at poles and zeros of a rational Z transform. So, first let us look at what is this rational Z transform. A Z transform X of Z which is, is written as a ratio of two polynomials B of Z and A of Z. That is both B of Z and A of Z are polynomials. So, a rational polynomial is basically a ratio of polynomials in Z inverse. Say ratio of polynomials in Z inverse. So, X of Z will be equal to B of Z by A of Z where B of Z can be written as B naught plus B1 Z inverse B2 Z power minus 2 and so on BM Z power minus M. And the denominator is and the denominator is A naught plus A1 Z inverse A2 Z power minus 2 and so on up to An z power minus n. So, this is a rational z transform. So, the polynomials can also be written in short by using the summation notation that is b of z can as summation with k is equal to 0 to m b k z power minus k and a of z can be written summation k equal to 0 to n a k z power minus k. So, the rational Z transform is basically ratio of these two polynomials or summations. Now, let us define the zeros and poles of this Z transform. So, definition of zeros. So, a zero of a Z transform, zero of a Z transform X of Z is that value of Z at which X of Z is equal to zero is that value of the variable Z at which x of z or x of z becomes 0. So, basically whenever x of z becomes 0, the, value, the location at which this x of z is 0 is a 0 or is defined as a 0. Now, let us look at the definition of poles. Definition of poles. Poles of a z transform or pole of a z transform. Poles of a z transform x of z are those values of the variable z or those values of variable z at which x of z diverges that is x of z is equal to infinity. So, zeros are the values at which x of z becomes 0 and poles are the values of the variable z at which x of z becomes infinity. Now, let us go back to the rational z transform and here we have the polynomials in terms of z inverse. So, it is not very convenient to find the roots of this polynomial. So, first we have to convert this ratio or convert these polynomials into uh, components or uh, basically different kinds of polynomials where we have positive powers of z. So, first we have to convert these polynomials such that we have positive powers of z. So, z inverse not convenient for finding zeros and poles. So, we have to convert the terms or convert the convert the polynomials to a new polynomial, new set of polynomials with z power k or positive powers of k where k is greater than or equal to 0. So, how do we do that? So, to convert this rational z transform into these new polynomials with positive powers of z, all we have to do is take the uh, powers of z inverse that is the maximum powers of z inverse for example, z power minus m and z power minus n as common terms and then we adjust the rest of the terms that is given x of z equal to b naught plus b1 z inverse plus b2 z power minus 2 and so on plus bm z power minus m and a naught plus a1 z inverse plus and so on a n z power minus n. Now, to convert everything into positive powers of z, all we have to do is take this z power minus m common in the numerators and z power minus n common in the denominators. And to get the first coefficients as ones, we also divide all the terms with b naught in the numerator and a naught in the denominator. So, finally, x of z can be rewritten as b naught by a naught multiplied by z power minus m 
divided by z power minus n so that is the common terms we want to extract from each of the terms so the ratios the new ratios become z power m for the first term we have z power m we already took b not out so the first term will be z power m second one will be b1 by b not z power m minus 1 and so on with the last term becoming b m by b0 the last term is b m by b0 and similarly in the denominator we have z power n plus a1 by a0 z power n minus 1 and so on and the last term will be a n by a0 so that is the new structure of the rational z transform now the next step to find the zeros and poles is to write these polynomials in factorized forms that is we can write z transform as x of z is equal to b naught by a naught z power minus m plus n and then this numerator and denominator can be written as z minus z1 multiplied by z minus z2 and so on z minus zm that is it is written as a factorized form where these terms z1 z2 z3 and so on up to zm are basically zeros of this polynomial or the values at which the polynomial become becomes zero and similarly for the denominator we can also write this one as z minus p1 z minus p2 and so on z minus pn that means this p1 p2 p3 up to pn are basically poles of the z transform or the values at which the denominator becomes zero therefore the compact form for the pole zero format of the z transform can be written as g times the product k is equal to 1 to m z minus z k that is the zeros z k are basically zeros and the denominator is product k is equal to 1 to n z minus p k that is factorized in terms of poles so this is the pole zero format of the z transform so for this z transform for example in case 1 if the value m is greater than n then the number of zeros number of zeros where the value of 0 is not equal to 0 or are usually not equal to 0 or that is z case uh, is the value is m and similarly number of poles number of poles that is p case or n that is the number is n and finally and since m is greater than n that is we assumed m is greater than n in that case there will be extra term z power minus m plus n that means it is equal to it will have which can be written as 1 by z power m minus n or and we assumed m is greater than n so this can be further simplified or further written as 1 by z modulus of m minus n so it's basically 1 by z power a positive number so at z equal to 0 this 1 by z power mod modulus of m minus n will always be equal to infinity that is we have m minus n poles at z equal to 0 that is we have m minus n poles at the origin similarly at z equal to infinity this term 1 by z power modulus of m minus n will always be equal to 0 that means we have m minus n zeros at the infinity that is at z equal to infinity to combine these results uh, so for m greater than n there are m zeros at z case and m minus n zeros at z equal to infinity and similarly uh, we have n poles at p case and also m minus n poles at z equal to zero so the total number of poles and zeros are always equal next consider the case next we will consider the case where n is greater than m so case 2 where n is greater than m in that case we have again for n greater than m we have z case are all zeros and the number is again m that is z case or zeros and the number is m and again p case are all poles the number is again capital n and then this term 1 by z next the term z power minus m plus n can be written as z power n minus m or z power modulus of n minus m since n is greater than m so this is a positive power of z so 
we have z equal to 0 that is at z equal to 0 we have n minus m zeros and at z equal to infinity we have n minus m poles so again in total the number of zeros and number of poles are finally same so basically the number of poles that is number of poles for which the that is pk are finite valued that is the number of poles for which the pk's are finite valued is n, n plus that is the number of poles pk which are all finite valued that is pk's are finite valued is n and uh, the number of zeros that is zeros or uh, zk's are all m and the zeros at z equal to 0 or n minus m so the total is again n so the finite valued poles uh, that is the finite valued locations of the poles and finite valued locations of zeros that is number of zeros that is zk's and at z equal to 0 the total number is again n that is these two are equal that is we are not counting the value of z equal to infinity that also will uh, give us poles but they are not included so only the finite valued locations are actually equal so to summarize we have looked at the poles and zeros of a rational z transform so the rational z transform is basically ratio of two polynomials where the polynomials are functions of this z inverse and the polynomials can be written in short forms that is it can also be written as a summation so the definitions of zeros and poles the zeros are those values of z at which the z transform becomes zero and the poles are those values of z for which the z transform x of z becomes infinity and to find the factorized form or the pole zero format of the z transform this z inverse format is not convenient so we uh, basically uh, manipulate this one or this uh, format to a new format or new polynomials where we have positive powers of z uh, by simply taking some terms common that is z power minus m and z power minus n so this will finally lead, lead to a factorized form of the z transform and that is it factorized in terms of zeros and poles now in the case where we have this degrees m and n uh, for example if the degree m is greater than n then the number of zeros z case is equal to m and poles equal to n where these values of poles or the locations of the poles are finite value and because of this term z power minus m plus n and m is greater than n we have extra m minus n poles at z equal to 0 and we also have so the total number of zeros and poles will be equal to m where this locations or the values of the uh, z case and p case are finite will be equal to m that means they are equal the number is always equal similarly in the second case where n is greater than m again the finite valued zeros that is z case r is equal to m and p case are equal to is equal to n and then z power minus m plus n becomes z power n minus m and at z equal to 0 we have zeros and z equal to infinity we have poles so again the finite valued locations that is uh, the values for which pks are finite values the total number of poles is given by n and the total number of zeros is given by m plus n minus m which is basically again equal to n so again these two values the number is equal that is number of poles and number of zeros are equal thanks for watching